this is the Provoke Prawn and this is the Corsair MP700 Pro. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up and install as well as test this NVMe SSD and I'm going to show you the process for installing it and how to wire it into your system because it does require SATA power to ensure that you get maximum speed out of it. Now this drive can manage up to 12,000 megabytes per second read speed assuming you've got the right hardware and I'm going to show you the process for installing it and then talk through a number of different things that's really important to be aware of. First off, this drive comes in three different variants. You can see this one with a heatsink, obviously, but you can also get one that will work with liquid cooling systems and one that comes without a heatsink at all. You can get it in different sizes too, so this is obviously the two terabyte version. Now it is quite a large thing, as you'll see, and it has its own little fan. And if I put it alongside my squashy stress banana, you can see just how chunky that is, and you'll get a vision of that installed on the motherboard in a second. Now this drive is backwards compatible with older generations, but it is a Gen 5 drive, so to get maximum speed out of it, you do need a Gen 5 motherboard. This is an MSI MAG Z790 motherboard, which has one NVMe Gen 5 port on it, which is the top one here. The installation process, as standard, is to remove the included heat shielding and any stickers that are included with your motherboard, and then slot the drive into place. You'll then need to seat it down over the thermal pad and then push it down with the latch. Now this motherboard has a latch here which basically allows you to notch it into place and hold it down. But what I found is I had to use a screwdriver to loosen it first and then secure it properly. You may find that other motherboards require an M2 screw that's included with the motherboard that you'll need to use to secure the drive into place. Now once it's installed you obviously also have to install the power cable because this drive does have a fan to keep it cool and that's important because Gen 5 drives can run particularly hot. So when it's fully in your system what you'd use is the SATA power which is the flat power connectors you'd usually use with 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch hard disk drives and SSDs and that same cable will then power this drive. It's really important you plug that in because if this drive gets too hot it probably won't run at the top speeds and that will obviously be a waste of performance but that large heat sink should also help with that alongside the fan and I'm happy to report you can't hear the fan over other system fans in there but you will see that it is a very tall drive so it sticks into the system and obviously we have to abandon the original heat shielding that comes with your motherboard so something to keep in mind there. Now with that done we then need to get into Windows to do some other things. So I want to start by showing you how to set it up in Windows and talk about some performance testing to make sure it's running as expected. One of the other things I'd recommend doing if you're not too sure about the setup of your motherboard is downloading Hardware Info 64 and Hardware Monitor. With Hardware Info 64 we can look at the drives installed in the system and make sure they're in the right place and that they are supported fully. So with this MSI motherboard, for example, you can click on the drive section here, head over to the NVMe drives, find the Corsair drive that we're looking at, and then check the specs in there. You can see that it is a PCIe NVMe SSD and it's X4 lanes, so it's using four lanes. And if we click on the controller information up there, you'll be able to find out more about it. So you can see there's a link here. If you click on that, that will then take you into the controller section. And in there, you can see that this is marked as PCIe Gen 5. So it says 5.0 down here with a maximum link width of 4, so X4. And that represents the number of PCIe lanes coming from the CPU that are controlling this drive and that is what is expected. If you see something different you may find that you're not getting maximum speed out of this. As I said this drive will work on older systems but if you try to use a Gen 5 drive on a Gen 4 slot on your motherboard you won't get maximum speed. The other thing to bear in mind if you look at Hardware Info 64 with this motherboard it is if the top slot is populated what happens is the graphics card actually has the number of lanes halved. So usually you'd have PCIe X16 for your graphics card. This is a 4070 and now that only has X8 lanes. So we've only got eight lanes, so it's half the number of lanes. I'm going to do a video separately on what this can mean for your system, but it is something to bear in mind. Now this isn't the case with every motherboard. I've seen others where you can populate all the slots on the motherboard and it doesn't negatively impact the graphics card. Sometimes other generations previous generations gen 4 same sort of thing so it's not necessarily down to this Corsair drive and it will vary from motherboard to motherboard but it is worth checking 
your motherboard manual and also those settings to see what the impact is because you can see here again PCIe Gen 4 x16 slot but it's running at eight lanes so it's x8 which means we don't have as many lanes for the graphics card, which could impact performance. But again, separate video for that. Now for setting up the driver, making sure it appears in the Windows File Explorer, what we need to do is go into the Start menu and then type Disk Management. And you can see you can then create and format hard disk partitions. Open up Disk Management. Hopefully you should see the drive initializes immediately windows recognizes the new drive there there's a pop-up for it but then you need to find that drive which is, has a black bar on it because it's not got anything on there then click new simple volume and then assign it a drive letter we need to go through this process and make sure it's formatted and then give it a relevant name so i'm just going to give it the name of the product so we know which one's which when we're doing other things later on it will then go through a process of formatting that drive and it should then appear. But if you find it doesn't, you may need to assign it a different drive letter. So you can do that by right clicking, assign a new drive letter and then changing the drive letter in there. You should then find that in Windows Explorer, it then becomes visible. You don't often need to do this, but if you do find it doesn't appear, that may well be why or because it's just taken a while to format. So make sure it's formatted properly and it should appear. Next up, you want to head over into Device Manager Go into your disk drives, click on the properties of that and then click into policies. What we want to do is make sure that enable write caching on the device is turned on and turn off Windows write cache buffer flushing on the device as well. And that will ensure that we get maximum speeds during the testing process. Now for this, I'm using Crystal Dismark, which I'll leave a link to in the description, which is a free benchmarking tool. Make sure it's set to NVMe settings, select the right drive from the drop downs and then choose the same settings as me. So 9, 64 gigs, and then obviously the K drive, which we set up, run the tests, and you'll see that now we're getting 12,000 megabytes per second read speed, 11,000 megabytes per second write. That's obviously going to vary depending on the number of files, but essentially this is a synthetic benchmarking tool, which gives you an idea of the speeds. And it's worth doing this just to make sure that the drive is running at the speed you're expecting. If it isn't, it could be down to temperatures or that you've got it in the wrong spot. But you'll notice if you look at the specs on Corsair's website, the maximum operating temperature for this drive is 70 degrees C. So something to keep in mind. If you've got a compact system and the airflow is not amazing, so you haven't got enough fans or the case is a bit choking off your system, then this may cause a negative impact because the drive is running too hot and therefore it won't get the best performance out of it. However, that large heat shield and the fan should actually help. And what I found during my testing is a maxed out of 57 degrees. So after running multiple benchmark tests on this, I was only getting up to 57 degrees C. So it was pretty good performance there and no issues in terms of the speed. But you can run these tests and make sure everything's working well and as expected in your system. And hopefully this will help. It's also worth noting that Corsair does also have its own disk management utility as well. I'll leave linked in the description so you can use that tool for other things for this drive. So that might be worth downloading and using. And if you want to find out more about the build that you've seen in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. I'll leave specs of that down below, but you can see it here in the Lee and Lee Evo RGB along with Corsair's IQ link, which looks pretty nice in this setup. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did subscribe and come back for more, thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.